and what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel and it's been a while since i've uh done a guide i guess i, I don't think i've done a guide in a, in a good bit anyways today we're going to be doing a guide on um, clock tuner for ryzen also known as ctr made by our boy one usmus now if you are a ryzen owner uh you know that one usmus has been making some really really great tools and tweaks and guides in the past few years on Ryzen optimization. His claim to fame definitely, in my opinion, was the DRAM calculator tool that um, basically you put in a bunch of RAM information and it, and it gave you the best overclock for your RAM uh, that you'd have to put in manually. And then he released uh, an optimized power plan for Windows that actually helped with uh, boost frequencies on Ryzen. Now, he's released a tool that I've actually been looking out for for a really, really long time. And I actually DM'd him on Twitter uh, a week before it came out asking if I could get, get, you know, get my hands on a little early and try making a video. But obviously, he didn't respond. I'm a nobody. So, uh, now that the tool's released and a few hot fixes have been out, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to use it. Um, LTT has a good video as well on how to do it, but I feel like they're missing out on some serious information and how the application works. So here we are on the uh, Guru 3D website. I will be putting this download in the description for you guys to um, check it out. So there's three things you're going to need in total. You're going to need CTR, obviously. Ryzen Master, which you can get from AMD's website, which I will also link. And Cinebench R20, uh, you can't use the Windows Store version, you have to download it manually from Maxon's website, and um, I'll show you where to put it. So for me, um, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, I already have it, actually, so I'm just going to go in my download folder, you guys can look through my files, I don't care. So this is what I currently have, um, but for the purpose of this video, I will make a new folder, I'm just going to name it YouTube CTR. Um, extract the contents of this folder or extract the contents of this archive into this folder and then I will do the same thing for Cinebench R20. I will put that in the CB20 uh, folder that one us must specifically put in here. Put all the files in there if Windows will let me. There we go. Now for a quick explanation on what this tool does, I probably forgot to bring that up. Basically, this is a simultaneous under volt and overclock. So what it does is it uses the, I didn't mean to do that. It uses the library from Ryzen Master that allows instantaneous um, overclocking and stuff and not having to boot into the BIOS. It uses those libraries along with Prime95 for stability testing and Cinebench for uh, benchmarking. So how this is going to work is you're going to get this and you're going to open up ctr.exe. It should already have admin privileges. Launch that and you'll be put in the uh, main area. And I'll give a rundown on what these numbers mean. So the first numbers you want to look at is CCX, your, or look at both your CCXs. I have a Ryzen 7, so you'll have two CCXs, same with the Ryzen 5, and with the Ryzen 9s, you will have up to eight C, no, you will have up to three or four CCXs on the Ryzen 9, depending which one it is, and then up to eight if you're on Threadripper. This application does work on Threadripper as well. So here's some parameters um, right here, not parameters, but some numbers that you want to look at. This is very interesting. So this right here gives a score on how good your CPU bin is. Um, it tells you what core is the fastest or which core can clock highest. And this is responsible. This, this is the same thing Windows looks at. I just burped. This is the same thing Windows looks at to um, figure out which core to boost the highest, which it actually does now. It's, it's interesting to watch a single threaded application run and see this uh, these two cores get the uh, priority. So as you can tell, I have a decent chip. Mine isn't great. Um, I'll go over what uh, the issues with my setup are. But um, basically, as you can tell, my CCX, usually the first CCX is usually the best one. Um, not in my case, my second CCX is, and they're okay. CCX1 is pretty bad. Not pretty bad, but bad, and CCX2 is decent. Um, so I got a bad bin. It is what it is. 
So down here, you can look at your CPU usage, uh, how much voltage or is coming from your um, your eight pin connector to your motherboard. I believe so. This is the voltage that the CPU is reporting it is getting, uh, the watts that the CPU is using, and um, some amperage and uh, some other stuff through certain lines. I'm not gonna, I'm not 100 sure. Cycle time is how long the application actually uh, cycles through and or how long each test is. Uh, CCX Delta, that is how much increments this tool automatically overclocks with. It will go up in um, 25 megahertz, which I recommend for uh, basically all the processors. It takes a while, especially if you're on like a Threadripper system, but you really want to get that perfect uh, score dialed in. Testing mode for me is locked to AVX Lite, which is what One Us Most requires anyways. Um, reference frequency, this is where this is going to begin its overclock. Like this is where it's first going to try and start to uh, overclock to, 4075. This is the maximum frequency it will try and hit. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to hit 4600 megahertz. It's just there, just um, I guess allow for headroom. It's the default, so I'm keeping it there. This is the reference voltage. Um, if you're watching this video, uh, I guess I'll go ahead and say this as well. The voltage is locked to 1.35 volts. Now, in the case of me, I have a pretty bad bend, so I need I need more voltage, but also have some more thermal headroom. He doesn't allow voltage to be set higher than 1.35. I would like an option somewhere in the settings to remove a voltage limiter and get that to 1.4, even all the way up to 1.5. I wouldn't do that, but I'm sure other people would like that um, functionality. Max temperature, Ryzen is perfectly fine being maxed out at 95 degrees Celsius. So that's where I have mine. And while we're talking about temperature, I will um, say some issues that I have with I have with my system. So a few videos back, it's one of my, I think it's my most viewed video on YouTube right now with about 11,000 views. Um, the EK water block that I'm running on my system, I am running a custom water loop is not great. Um, it has to do with, first of all, it was very not flat, which most CPU blocks and cold plates aren't flat, um, but mine was really bad. So I ended up lapping mine, which brought down temperatures, but the location of the cold, not cold plate, but the location of the jet on the cold plate does not cool down the uh, chiplets on the Ryzen CPUs. So I end up with pretty high temperatures, even though I'm on a custom loop running a 240 millimeter hardware labs radiator and a 120 millimeter hardware labs rad. Uh, it gets very hot. I am looking into getting a heat killer block to hopefully fix that. So my results are personally not going to be great as what maybe you guys are going to get because my temper, I'm just not getting great um, flow and CPU contact. So, uh, if you also have a Ryzen 7 3700X system, don't look at my benchmark scores or don't expect my benchmark scores to be uh, about the same as yours. I actually score anywhere from three to 400 points lower than other people get specifically because of this. So over here is um, some more parameters that Precision Boost Overdrive also looks at, such as uh, the maximum amount of watts. I, use, I also set these to max, I believe, 300s to max before CTR uh, won't run these tests. It actually won't run the test if you set these values too high. For me, my chip is so bad, I actually cannot do 12.5 volts or 12.5 volts, 1.25 volts with my reference fre fre frequency at 4075. I actually have to bring this up to 1.35 uh, to get, see any type of scaling or overclocking, which is why I would like um, the voltage limits uh, increased. On his guide, he also recommends um, improving the LLC on your motherboard if you have that. Load line calibration, it pretty much stops voltage frequency. I mean, voltage frequency like um, spikes and drops at the CPU. And I have mine uh, set to level three or four on my MSI B550 Gaming Plus, which seems to be good. As you can tell, um, I have a profile applied already that's 1.35 volts and it's getting 1.36 or 1.356, so it's actually going a little bit higher, which in my case is fine because I need a little bit of voltage. So what I'm going to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and start the test and it will, I'll show you what it begins to do. So now it is going to open up a Cinebench um, run and it's going to get you some baseline figures and it tells you what you're boosting to. So at 1.35 volts, uh, 
factory. I guess my chip does th anywhere from 3.9 to 4 gigahertz, and it's going to run this test. I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch this, so I'm going to fast forward through this test, and um, you can see my temperatures. They're pretty, pretty high, about 80 degrees Celsius on a custom loop. But anyways, yeah, I won't let you guys uh, see this. I'm going to go ahead and skip through and show you guys the results at the end. So the test just stopped. Um, I think I can go over here to benchmarks and see what, yeah. So this system default is getting uh, a 4350 or 4349 on Cinebench, which has to do with my chip. I'm actually considering, um, I'm actually considering trying to get a different chip, maybe a Ryzen 9, but that really blows that my, but at least you guys will be able to see the difference in performance. This is what my system, or my, uh, yeah, what well, my system is able to do the default, this is what I should be getting. Um, so what it's going to do now is you can tell it's running. It brought this up to our reference frequency. As you could tell during the Cinebench run, it was only doing about 3.9 gigahertz. I think it was like 3,925 megahertz. So now it's bringing that up all the way to 4,075 because that's what our reference frequency is. And it's going to run Prime 95, as you can tell in the background. Sometimes it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you can actually go over here under CTR and it's running prime 95. So this is a pretty heavy load. Surprisingly, it's, it's not that much of a load because, um, I actually get cooler temperatures on prime 95 than I do on son bench, which is pretty crazy. But, um, yeah. So what it's going to do now is it's going to go through these tests and I think it does three separate stress tests using different FFTs on prime 95 and it's going to automatically start adjusting frequency using our CCX Delta, which is 25 megahertz. Um, I could be wrong, actually. I may have just said something very wrong to you guys. Um, I'll add a thing up. I, now that I'm reading CCX Delta, I think that's the highest Delta that you can have between two CCXs. So I'm going to look that up, actually. Um, off like at the end of this video, and I will put a note up on the screen if I am wrong. So I'm not going to let you guys sit here and watch this. I will fast forward it so you guys can see what it does, and I'll stop to commentate um, occasionally. But you can see in, these, uh, in this login system information uh, about how it adjusts the frequency. All right. So now that the um, first stress test has ended, uh, as you can tell, it passed it, so it's going to bring up the frequency by 25 megahertz. Now, I was wrong at the beginning of this video. I just looked it up. Um, the CCX delta is actually the difference between these two, which could explain why I'm not getting the best scores because um, I feel like the this, this second CCX could clock um, a little bit higher than the 25 megahertz delta, which I'm fine with that delta. So... Um, after this video, I will most likely, or I might just add it at the end of the video because I don't want to stop this test, but um, you will be able to, or I guess I'll be able to get a little bit more performance because I feel like my second CCX can clock uh, a good bit higher. So we'll let these run. Again, as you can tell, it brought up both uh, CCXs by 25 megahertz, and it's going to run through three different stress tests with different FFTs. And if one fails, it can Prime95 can actually report if one fails by seeing if a thread gets dropped, like a CPU utilization drops down to like 95% or even crashes a thread. And it'll know if that's unstable or not. And CTR is able to clock down that core and clock up the next or clock up the next CCX and continue. Alrighty. So as you guys can tell right there, uh, we did get a thread drop. Um, it says CCX1 overclocking failure, meaning one of these um, 
threads dropped during the Prime 95 test and it brought down their frequency from 4150, which it passed all the way up until then, to 4125. Um, and it's gonna redo that test. If it passes, this is gonna be our overclock because of our CCX Delta. We can only have a 25 megahertz of Delta. So it's gonna run through another series of tests, make sure it's stable, do a Cinebench run, compare the results. If Cinebench doesn't crash, then we know it's a um, it should be a stable overclock and uh, we can compare our before and after. So I'm gonna let this run through see what kind of uh see what kind of results we get and um get back to you guys then all right so that last we can open up clock tuner that last stress test did go through um without any crashes so our overclock is now going to be 4075 and 4100 and i think cinebench hit a temperature limit yep so um i actually keep my uh I actually keep my fans turned off um, during this test, so I'm going to crank those up. I didn't want it to be loud on my mic, so I'm actually going to crank up my fans real quick so I can actually run Cinebench. Um, but if we look down here, this is what we got before, and this system tuned. That's not right. It has got confused because of the crash. So I have my fans up right now. I'm actually going to run Cinebench in this folder. And hopefully we don't hit temperature limit. If not, I'm going to have to wait for uh, things to cool down. Delta. There we go. So 4450, that is compare. Let's compare that. 44 or, yeah. 4455 compared to, what did we get before? 4350. So let me pull do a math equation. 4455. So <laughs> I actually got a seems like to be a 2.35% increase. Um, again, this is going to vary with your guys' chips. This publication, from what I've seen, has done a lot better. Ten per, up to 10% improvements with lower thermals. But I have bad everything. I have a bad chip, um, inefficient cooling, and uh, a chip that doesn't undervolt well. So... I just made this video as a guide to show that it does actually work. And um, I'm hoping that maybe you guys will get better results. I'm curious to see what you guys have. So just leave it in the comments below. Um, again, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments. And I will be sure to respond and help you guys personally. Um, that should be it. And I will see you guys in the next one.